Question 24, start question. You have to do quite a lot of writing in questions like this. If it says give reasons for your answers, they're looking for the correct vocabulary being used, the right words, and describing everything. So if you do something, if you put down a fact on a question involving angles and triangles, make sure that you write down why you chose that. Now what we've got here is a parallelogram. So we know opposite sides are the same length. We know that opposite angles are the same. And that's going to help us out a little bit. We know that angle ADB, that's the angle formed between AD and B here, is 38 degrees. We know that BEC, B to E to C, is 41 degrees. And DAB is 120. We're trying to work out what angle X is. So to work out angle X, we need to know what this angle here is. We need to know what this angle here is. A few ways we can do that, and I'm going to show you just one of many possibilities on how to do this. First off, we're going to work out this angle here, which is the easiest one, I believe. Now, what we need to re realise is this angle's name first is DEC. So we're going to look at DEC. I'll put a little angle over E to show that this is an angle. Now, what you should see is that's a nice straight line. So we've got 180 degrees on a straight line. We already know that 41 degrees of that is taken up. So 180, take away 41, is 139 degrees. Now at the moment, that might be enough to get us a mark, but in this question it would not, because we've not explained or given a reason. The only explanation you need to give on this is something like straight line angles always equal 180 degrees. And that's like that's probably good enough to get you that mark there. So we've got one of our angles, 100 and 39 degrees. I'm going to say this will be quite advanced now because what we can do is work out this angle here, EDC, as being the same as angle ABD. How can we do that? Well, these are parallel lines. So this transversal line, the line through the middle, gives us this nice Z shape which creates an alternate angle. They're an opposite size, they're alternating between each side of the transversal. So that's what we're going to work out next is A, B, D. So angle A, B, D. Now, with what we've got is a triangle. So we know it's 180 degrees again, and we have to justify that underneath. We've got 120 degrees on one of the angles. We've got 38 on the other. So let's see what we've got left over. 180, take away 120, take away 38, leaves us with 22 degrees. So I'm just going to label that on my diagram as well. 22 degrees. What's my reason? Triangle interior angles. equal 180 degrees. I mean that's the fact that we've used so just make a note of it. Now for the final part we've got to say right we need angle EDC so we can work out our final one so EDC equals 22 degrees. Why? EDC is alternate to A, B, D. We've used the correct term here so it shows that we know what we're looking at. We could, You could also add on something like here, it creates a Z shape between parallel lines. It's not the correct terminology and they might not accept it, so do make sure that you're using the right words. 
But now we've got that missing angle there, we know that that one's 22 degrees, we've got everything we need to work out the missing weight, so 139 at 22. So angle X, which is a little unfair for them to suddenly start changing the way they've named the, let the lettering for the angles, but hey, angle X equals 180, take away the 22 degrees that we just found, and the 139 that we found earlier on. So we've got 180, take away 139, take away 22, gives us an angle of 19 degrees. And again, the facts that we've used is that, is the one we've already mentioned here. Um, what was the name of that triangle? Uh, EDC. Uh, Triangle EDC um, equals 180 degrees in total. So we've explained all of our answers where they've come from. Each of these will give us a mark because we've explained it and done the correct calculations.